Today we are going to learn about call options. Now what exactly is a call? A call is a financial instrument which gives the buyer a right but not an obligation to take delivery of some stock at a particular price. Now being a financial instrument Obviously, there would be a buyer of a call and there would be a seller of a call. Let us first try to understand the whole thing from the point of view of the buyer of a call. Now, a buyer of a call, when he buys a call, what exactly does he buy? Well, a buyer of a call buys a right but not an obligation to take delivery of something at a particular price. Now, this take delivery of something. Now, what does this word something mean? The something is called as the underlying. And he's got a right but not an obligation to take delivery of something at a particular price. Now, this particular price, which is fixed on day one, is called as the strike price or the exercise price. Now, let's try to understand this with the uh, help of an example. Let us say I buy a March 25th, 2017 call on Infosys at a strike price of 940 rupees. Now let's presume that the current market price of Infosys is 950 rupees. Now what this essentially means is I have a right but not an obligation to take delivery of Infosys that is to buy Infosys at a price of 940. Now, what does this right entitle me to? Now, let us presume that on 25th March, the price of Infosys, the stock, happens to be 1000 rupees. Now, if you remember, I have a right, but not an obligation, to take delivery of Infosys. That is, I can ask or demand for delivery of Infosys at my strike price, which is 940. So, if the market price of Infosys stock on that day is 1000, then it makes sense for me to exercise the option. That is, I can, I'll go and demand the delivery at 940. So, what's my profit? Well, when I exercise the call, I get the delivery of Infosys stock at a price of 940, which is the exercise price. So, I take delivery, I pay 940. And remember, I had paid a premium of 10 rupees to buy this option. So my total cost of buying this Infosys stock is 940 plus 10, 950. And what I'll do is I'll immediately sell it in the market for 1000 rupees, thereby making myself a profit of 50. But now, on the other hand, just imagine what would happen if the price of Infosys stock, instead of being 1000 on 25th of March, happens to be rupees 70. Now, if you remember, I have a right, but not an obligation to take delivery of Infosys stock at a price of 940. Now, if the market price of Infosys stock is 70, then there is no reason for me to exercise the stock option. Hence, I would allow the option to lapse. That is, I would do nothing. In which case, my loss would be restricted to the amount of premium which I paid, which if you remember was rupees 10. So in this case, my loss is going to be 10. Now you have a situation where if the price of the stock went up to 1000, I'm making a profit of 50 rupees. But if it goes down, then I'm making a loss of 10. Now let's take another example. Let us say on 25th March, the price of Infosys goes up to 2000 rupees. Now I have a right, but not an obligation to take delivery of the stock at 940. 
so i would exercise the option which means i would demand delivery pay rupees 940 and immediately sell the stock in the market for 2000 rupees now in this case what is the profit that i made it's quite a simple calculation i paid 940 when i exercised the option and i paid 10 rupees to buy the option so my total cost is 950 and i'll sell the stock in the market at 2000 rupees thereby making myself a profit of 1050 and what would happen if the stock price crashed to 20 rupees well in that case i wouldn't exercise my option and my loss would be restricted to 10 now this seems to be a perfect situation to be in where my profits could be unlimited that is as the stock price keeps going up i would tend to make more profit on my call but when the stock price goes below then my loss would be restricted to only 10 that is the premium that i paid now let's analyze and try to understand this situation from the point of view of the seller of the option that is the person who sold me the option well he's received a premium of rupees 10 from me and if the stock price happens to be rupees 1000 on 25th march then remember i'm going to exercise it that is i'm going to go to the seller and demand delivery so what will the seller do theoretically the seller will buy the stock from the market at 1000 rupees and hand it over to me and receive 9 940 rupees thereby he is making a loss of 60 rupees but remember he is he is received a premium of 10 which means he is going to make a loss of rupees 50 and if you remember when the price went to 1000 the buyer of the option that is me i made a profit of 50 so if you see the the profit loss of the buyer and the seller are exact mirror images that is a profit for the buyer of the option would result in an equivalent amount of loss to the seller of the option now again let's also try to analyze the situation what would happen if the stock price went down to 50 well in that case me the buyer will not go exercise the option i would allow it to lapse thereby my loss was stay and since i'm not going to exercise the option in any case the seller has to bear no loss on the other hand he would have an income of rupees 10 which is the premium that he paid so you see this in this case my loss is rupees 10 while his profit is rupees 10 now once again this proves that the profit or loss of the buyer and the seller are mirror images of each other now although i have explained this whole thing by assuming that we could take delivery however it is important for me to mention here that most of the options are cash settled that is they are not settled by delivery and the profit or loss is settled by making a payment through check i use the terminology of taking delivery just to make it easy for you to understand but it's very important for you to remember that options are not settled by delivery they are going to be cash settled now let's try to understand as to the rational or the objective as to why a person buys a call or why a person decides to sell a call well a buyer of a call buys the call in the hope that the price of the stock will increase and thereby he can make unlimited profits while on the other hand the seller of the call is selling the call on the assumption or on the expectation that the price of the stock will go down and thereby he can pocket the premium which means we can say that a buyer of a call is pretty optimistic on the market that is he is bullish on the market and the seller of the call is pessimistic about the market that is he is bearish on the market hence buying a call is a bullish strategy while selling a call is a bearish strategy the next thing that we need to learn is how to construct what we call as a payoff table now what exactly is a payoff table well a payoff table 
is a table which calculates how much profit or loss that a buyer or a seller would make if the market price of the stock on expiry happens to be say 940, 950, 960 or 970 or 980. So basically it is a what if table that is a table which shows what if the price of the stock went up to say 960? What if the price of the stock went up to 960? And so on. So now let's learn how to construct the payoff table. And for this purpose, let's take an example where I buy a three month call option on a stock. Let's call this stock for the time being as ABC Limited. The call has a strike price of 500 rupees and I'm paying a premium of let's say 20 rupees. Let's construct a payoff table for the buyer of the call and see as to what would be his position if say the stock price went up to 550 or it say went up to 560 or 570. Or on the lower side, it came down to say 480 or 470. So let's just construct a payoff table and see how we calculate the profit or loss. So let's prepare the payoff table for the buyer of a call who has purchased a three month call option on a stock of ABC Limited at a strike price that is an exercise price of rupees 500 and paid a premium of rupees 20 for this call. So we have we have the column for market price of the stock on expiry where we'll put various prices of the stock and analyze what happens. Then we have another column which shows as to whether the call will be exercised by the buyer or not. You have the premium paid and then we have the profit or loss. Now first let us take a scenario where the market price of the stock on expiry happens to be rupees 480. In this case, the buyer has a right to buy the stock at 500. Now, obviously, he's not going to exercise this right to buy the stock at 500 when the stock is freely available in the market at 480. So he will not exercise the option, in which case the premium paid by him will be his loss. Similarly, if the price is 490, again, he will not exercise it, in which case the premium paid will be his loss. If the stock price is 500, then he is indifferent, that is whether he buys it from the market or whether he acquires it by exercise of the option, the cost to him would still be 500. So he would rather not exercise it, in which case the premium would be 20 rupees. If the market price is 510, then remember he's got a right to buy the stock at 500. So obviously he's going to exercise the option. So if he exercises the option, he procures the stock at 500 and will immediately sell it in the market at 510 thereby making a profit of 10. But we know that he's paid a premium of 20. Hence, the net profit would be, or in this case, the net loss would be minus 10. If the market price of the stock happens to be 520 and he's got a right to buy the stock at 500, so obviously he's going to buy it at 500, sell it at 520, make a profit of 20, but he's paid a premium of 20, Hence, his profit or loss will be zero. If the market price is 530 and he has a right to buy the stock at 500, it's quite obvious that he's going to exercise it, in which case he's going to make a profit of 30 rupees, but he's paid a premium of 20, which means he's going to make a profit of 10. That is 30 rupees profit on the stock less the premium paid 20, 10. Similarly, at 540, he will exercise it making a profit of 40 rupees that is 540 minus 500 but he's paid a premium of 20 therefore he will make a profit of 20. At 550 he will exercise it making a profit of 50 rupees on the stock that is 550 minus 500 but he's paid a premium of 20 so his net profit is 30. At 560 he is again going to exercise it premium paid 20 his profit would be 40. So now we see that when the stock price is 500 and below, he will not exercise the option. 
and his loss will be restricted to 20 but the moment the stock price goes above 500 he will start making profits and the profits will keep increasing as the stock price increases now if we plot this on a piece of a graph paper that is the market the price of stock on expiry and the profit or loss we get a figure like this which shows that up to 500 he is going to make a loss of 20 then at 510 he starts reducing his losses to minus 10 at 520 his loss is going to be zero and at 520 and above he is going to make profits so now we can see from this table that the break-even point for the buyer of a call is the strike price plus the premium paid in this case the break-even point was at 520 where his profit or loss was zero and 520 is nothing but the strike price plus the premium that he has paid to conclude let us just summarize the takeaways from this short lecture first of all we have learned that buying a call gives a right but not an obligation to take delivery of something that is the underlying asset at a particular price that is the exercise price selling a call gives an obligation to give delivery of something that is the underlying asset at a particular price that is the exercise price the buyer of the call pays the premium while the seller of the call receives the premium in case of buyer of a call the loss is restricted to the premium but profits could be unlimited and in case of seller of a call the losses could be unlimited while profits are restricted to the premium buying a call is bullish strategy while selling a call is a bearish strategy that's all for today friends and keep watching this space for more short videos like this thank you